started thinking about TESOL in the global context, I think there's been some rethinking of some aspects of communicative language teaching, but some of the fundamentals have also stayed the same. So that's what I'm trying to show in this ta table. So the first one, the focus and concern, uh, in the early phase of communicative uh, language teaching, it was the attention was on how English was used by native speakers and how we could help our learners to, do, to, to learn to use the, the language like native speakers. In this revision in, in view of a, a, a global context of TESOL, there's a recognition of the heterogeneous nature of English in communication around the world and the idea of helping learners to use English in the context that's going to be relevant to them, relevant to them and also thinking about developing the, our learners as bilinguals for whom English is one of their languages. In curriculum, no change. Language is learned to meet community. You teach the language that's going to fulfil the communicative needs of the students. Say at the beginning, that's the same now. No change in that. Teaching strategies, again, very much the same. The idea of contextualising language uh, Relating, relating to social situations, attention to all macro skills, meaningful interaction in the classroom, and, and often contextualised language, uh, focus on language forms. Cultural awareness, in the early, there's change there. In the early stages of communicative language teaching, helping students to become aware of the cultural practices and perceptions of native speakers and culture-specific understanding of native-speaking contexts with this later thinking, the global context, thinking about cross-cultural communication and helping students to have culture general understanding. So understanding more about the nature of, of, of communication, and let, uh, sorry, the nature of culture, and less about the specifics of particular native speaking English cultures. Um, in, in terms of the language, the original notion of native speaker norms and pragmatics, that's the target. Uh, now we're thinking of English used by speakers with different accents, the sorts of things that Adrian was playing about, different accents who use different pragmatics um, and use the language differently. There are different theories of learning, I won't go into them, that's too complex. Uh, the teacher role, I think in the early stages of communicative language teaching, people were thinking about the authority of the teacher as an informant on the use of English as it's used by native speakers. Whereas now we're thinking about teachers as the people who are experts themselves on how the language is used locally. And teacher identity, uh, where originally started thinking and talking about teachers and how they related to native speaker language use and that privileging of native speakers. Uh, whereas now there's a, an understanding of the multiple and diverse affiliations that teachers have as teachers of English and the expertise, nobody has the best type of expertise. We've all got different types of expertise that we bring to the endeavour and our students can benefit from any one of us, whatever our background, whatever our affiliation with English. So that's just the shift, I think, in the thinking within the communicative um, dimensions of, uh, sorry, the communicative uh, ideology, if you like, of TESOL. Um, the other dimensions of TESOL, thinking about uh, the cultural diversity, thinking about bilingualism being an additive process, process, not a subtractive process, that we need to be exploring cultural dimensions of English language as it's used, um, and we need to think about the contexts of cultures in creating and interpreting meaning. We can't revert just to focus on the linguistic form. We don't, we need to be paying attention to what's going on in the cultural and pragmatic dimensions of language use. Uh, we still need to look at um, culture in comparative terms, see things relatively, and learners need to relate themselves to their own and other cultures. And we want our students to be able to operate fluently in these cross-cultural interactions. It's a big challenge, big challenge. Okay, and uh, Baker's done an interesting little article that you might want to follow up if you look it up on the website. So, what does this mean? Teaching TESOL, I think, in this local context, to me, means exploring the way that English is used 
locally. That doesn't mean you ignore the way that English is not used, it's used in the more broader in the broader global context, but you then need to help your students to be aware of how other varieties of English is used, how English is used in other places, so they have that broader awareness. Um, your students need to have an awareness of different varieties of English, different varieties, different styles. English needs to be connected to the curriculum and local circumstances and connected to the lives of the learners. It's not something abstract that's remote and a long way away from them. We need to be helping our students to respect, respectfully explore, okay, I'm being respectfully told my time's up, I'm going to just take another minute to respectfully ignore that. <laughs> um, uh, okay, it, helping students to understand uh, cultural perceptions and how they respond to those, designing learning and learning processes. Um, we also need to think about how we're uh, developing learners identities as users of English in Thailand or wherever it is that they're learning. Okay, so there's multiple local points of reference, not just the native speaking context. Uh, it also means being the speaker of English that you are and thinking about what your background in coming to English teaching is, being aware of and confident of your affiliation, whatever your affiliation with English, helping your students by being a cultural general interpreter and guide rather than teaching them about Australians or Americans or British people. Uh, less of an authority and more of a model, an interpreter, interpreter and a mediator, um, helping your students to deal with uh, diverse interactions in English. Okay, I'm, I'm really young. I think there's some, I'm going to briefly mention four connections that I think we could use to do this. Connecting with content. What is it that your students know about? If they're going to be engineers, help them to talk about engineering in English. If you're going to be agricultural scientists, talk about agricultural science, whatever it is. The culture connection, exploring those cultural dimensions of language, different styles of communication. I think you've got to also explore what does it mean to be an English speaker of Thai background and how, what does it mean to be using English and also how do you talk about Thailand and your Thai identity as in English. Um, and you also need to help your students to find, follow up the things they're interested in and how they're dealt with in English. Uh, if you go to the PowerPoint, you'll see I've listed a couple of examples of some high degree research that does explore that, including um, uh, Willowak Riyak, who presented this morning, looking at how English is used locally and how it can be, uh, and how a teaching response might be. So, quickly, in conclusion. Know and understand yourself and your students, basic teaching principles. Work with the shifting sands of this very nebulous thing about English and T-cell and global context. Understand what's liberating about this, so that's bringing English closer to your students, making it more concrete and making it less remote. Also understanding the unnerving dimensions of teaching, because it's not all good news, there's some bad news in there too. Thinking about when well, you've got less clearly defined norms, that makes it more challenging. And helping your students develop um, skills and processes of interaction rather than the details of the interaction. Um, explore and understand the local and also think about the global. I'm sorry if I've gone a little bit over time. I hope I've given you some itches to scratch and I hope that uh, I hope that I have connected with you whatever your context is.